There are three types of microplastic samples, sediment samples, net samples, and bulk water samples. Each of these sampling methods has a slightly different processing method that goes along with it. The sediment samples require digestion, separation, filtration, and counting. The net samples require sieving, digestion, separation, filtration, and counting. And the bulk water samples simply require filtration and counting. This video is broken down into individual protocols, so you can skip ahead to the portions that are relevant to your samples. Net samples are taken in the field by allowing the water to flow through a drift net, zooplankton net, or any similar fine mesh net and calculating the volume of water that traveled through. This leaves you with a sample that contains plastics, but also whatever debris, leaves, sticks, etc. that flows through. Pour your net sample through stacked sieves with the widest at the top and the smallest at the bottom. Make sure the smallest sieve is smaller than the mesh of the net you used. Rinse the collection container lid and coarse organic matter that's collected at the top sieve with distilled water. We use distilled water because we found our distilled water from the lab has less microplastic than normal tap water. Rinse the material that collected on your smaller sieve with distilled water and transfer it to a 300 milliliter beaker. This becomes your sample. Cover this beaker with foil and place it in an oven at 75 degrees Celsius for two to three days to dehydrate the sample. For the digestion, you need a hot plate, a stir bar, a 400 milliliter beaker, a 1000 milliliter graduated cylinder, heat resistant gloves, 30% hydrogen peroxide, and 0.05 molar iron solution. This needs to be kept refrigerated when it's not being used. After the sample is finished drying, it is ready to be digested. Add equal portions of aqueous 0.05 molar iron solution and 30% hydrogen peroxide to the sample slowly. We start off with 20 milliliters of each. Add a rinse stir bar and heat the sample on a hot plate at 75 degrees Celsius. Once the mixture begins boiling, remove it from the plate and let the boiling slow down before continuing. The solution can boil violently if it's heated above 75 degrees. Once the boiling slows down, put it back on the hot plate and leave it there for 10 to 15 minutes until there are no more gas bubbles. If there is still organic matter visible, add another 20 milliliters of the hydrogen peroxide and repeat the heating step until the organic matter is no longer visible. Once there's no more organic matter, you can either move on to density separation or filtration. For the separation, all you need is metal stands and rings, glass funnels, tubing and pinch clamps, aluminum tins, salt, which is just normal table salt, and a balance. For every 20 milliliters of the total volume of your sample, add 6 grams of salt. Only count the liquid portion of your sample. Heat this mixture until all of the salt dissolves, which takes about 20 to 30 minutes. During this part of the protocol, everything is rinsed with a salt solution so that the sample is not diluted. Set up a funnel on a ring stand and attach a rinsed rubber tubing to the bottom of the funnel. Add a pinch clamp to the rubber tube as well. Place an aluminum tin underneath in order to collect the sediment from your sample. Before putting your sample in the funnel, Rinse the funnel with your salt solution.
transfer the solution from the beaker to the funnel slowly. Add a small amount of liquid first and pinch the tubing to remove all air bubbles before pouring the rest of the sample into the funnel. Remove your stir bar from your sample beaker. Rinse the stir bar with the salt solution to ensure that all pieces of plastic that may have gotten stuck to it are now in the funnel. Rinse your beaker with the salt solution as well to ensure that all plastic that may have gotten stuck to the sides, makes it into the funnel. Cover the funnel with foil and allow the particulates to settle for at least 60 minutes. Drain the sediment into a storage container or your aluminum Wavo without draining any of the liquid part of the sample. You can either discard the sediment or keep it to look further for microplastics. For filtering, you'll need distilled water for your controls and rinsing, forceps, glass fiber filters and a filter stand, aluminum tins, aluminum foil to wrap the tins, and squirt bottles, as well as a filtering apparatus. If your sample was just digested, simply take this sample over to your filtering station. This example will be from a bulk water sample. To begin, rinse all of your equipment, your ruler, and your forceps with distilled water. Next, remove one of your glass fiber filters and to make quadrants using a Sharpie or a Fisher marker onto that filter. Place your filter on your filter stand and prepare your sample. Note the volume of liquid of your sample that's going to be filtered. Pour your sample onto your filter and turn on the vacuum. Be sure to rinse out your sample cup and sample lid thoroughly with distilled water. Rinse the filter stand as well. Using your forceps, remove the filter from the filter stand and place it in an aluminum wave boat that's already been labeled. 
Be sure to push the edges of the filter down to make it even. This makes it easier for when you're counting the microplastics under a microscope. Cover your sample with a piece of aluminum foil. Allow your sample to dry for at least 24 hours before moving on to counting. Before filtering any new samples, be sure to rinse your filtration cup three times with distilled water. Once your cup has been thoroughly rinsed, place it back on the filter stand with aluminum foil on top. For counting, all you need is probes and a dissecting microscope. Plastic identification can be difficult at first, but in practice it becomes simple. Fibers are very common. Microplastic fibers can be identified by their bright colors and smooth appearances with the same thickness throughout. When plastic fibers are prodded with a probe, they may bend, but they don't break. Sand and salt can at times look like fragments of plastic, but when sand particles are prodded, they break and plastic pieces do not. Algae or other plant material can look like plastic, but if cells are visible, then you know that it is not plastic. <laughs>